So we just had a big discussion in the Mod Bargains offices about this topic. And the topic is going to be, well, you probably saw it in the title, the five underrated modifications that to be done to the car amongst the community. And the criteria for this is really what's most important. And I'll go into that in just a second, but let's run that intro. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Talking Mods. So for today's topic, we're doing the five underrated modifications um, that most people just overlook um, or the industry overlooks. I'm talking about manufacturers as well. Specifically for the criteria, it's based off of, you know, years of knowledge, not just within my own this time. It actually was a discussion in our offices. So this is a discussion topic that happened in the Mod Bargains office. We came up with a was a very difficult top five. I think we could probably do another one if you guys are interested of additional underrated uh, modifications. But the criteria for this were specifically modifications. It couldn't be car specific, right? So how do we even classify something that's underrated? Well, what, is it, what do people normally buy? Wheels, suspension, body kits, intakes, exhaust. They wanna be heard. They want more power. They do a turbo kit. They might do a supercharger kit these these are common things right so I'm gonna jump into it and actually I think they're all very underrated because they are very important and we'll talk about it right now so the first one is sway bars and you probably are like well I know sway bars yeah but how often are you adding sway bars to your vehicle how often do you see the impact of it or how often are you purchasing I can tell you guys now right off the bat less, if, if a person's buying a coilover, I'd say it's less than 10% they're even considering sway bars. I'd say the percentage of people that actually buy, let's say a thousand people bought coilovers, I'd say 2% might buy sway bars and even consider it. Uh, sway bars are actually very, they, they make a huge difference on the ride, you know, qualities of the vehicle, um, changing the, the handling. And again, that's where the fun comes in. And it's just completely underrated. And a lot of people just have a misunderstanding of, well, if I get sway bars, I don't know how to set it up. I'll give you guys the quick and easy of it. There's, there's more detail that can go into it. That could be a whole other topic. But the quick and easy of it is if your suspension is set up in a soft setting, then you stiffen up your sway bars. Then you want to get an adjustable sway bar. And if it's set into a stiff, then you want to make the sway bar soft. Now, how you set up your sway bars, you want to basically set them up so that you have your control, your controlling of the vehicle, right? You want to set it up for a slight mild understeer. Why would you want a little bit of understeer? And I'm talking about a minimal amount is to basically give you that feedback of when the car is going to basically break loose so you can make the corrections that you need to do. Or if you want to go into to making a break loose, then you know exactly where to do it. So most, most setups will be into a mild understeer. Now, Everyone's setup could be different for what they want to do, but this is the generality of where to go with sway bars. There are a ton of options out there. Um, some manufacturers that focus specifically on it. There's different manufacturing from hollow to solid tube. Eh, subtle differences there, but again, an underrated topic. So number two, um, it is a plenum. If you haven't heard of a plenum, it's also known as an intake manifold. Now this one is pretty interesting because there's just not a whole lot of manufacturers out there. Now, I did a video on IPD plenum. Specifically, they only focus on the Porsche market, maybe because there's big gains and people are willing to pay the price. But there are plenums out there that make great gains. Um, but I do think that the price could be brought down. I feel like this is an industry that could be explored. There's a lot of um, possibilities here. And now an intake manifold basically is just increasing, increasing the size, making it a more efficient. Oftentimes, the, it's just not a smooth um, air intake that comes in from the manifold. So that's what these plenums do. But I do think that's an area that's completely underrated, unexplored, and just generally not talked about, except in the Porsche market. So again, I wasn't being specific in one area, but I do think this is an industry-wide um, modification that could, be, that could definitely increase and, and, and be explored. All right, number three. Um, this one we kind of put it together in it to a group. It's called cooling um, and cooling it would include um, oil coolers. If you recall one of my videos before I talked about how the oil cooler 
um, was a major difference on the 370Z that was being on the track. In certain vehicles, for example, you'll see that with heat exchangers, cooling in general isn't going to increase horsepower, but on certain vehicles in particular, it really does maintain a lot of that horsepower and some cars lose a ton. It is this missed out opportunity for instead of thinking about, oh, I'm gonna spend 5K or 10K on a supercharger or getting a turbo or whatever just to increase horsepower, you're losing horsepower from all these other areas and you're getting less reliability when you can focus on high quality cooling. Now, high quality cooling is, is very important. There's some great brands out there like you know, Wagner Tuning or Mishimoto, or to, to name some of the two that I, I think have a lot of the engineering. But cooling in general is a very missed out, underrated area um, that I think people should definitely be looking at. Number four, uh, seats. First of all, it's, it's an investment in seats, right? Um, especially race seats and so forth. Now, if you're not racing, it doesn't really matter. Some people go out there, you know, racing in the normal seats, the factory seats you will not get as much feedback. So having a good seat that bolsters you, gives you the right amount of feedback, it's gonna give you a more compliant ride, but more of a in-touch type of ride is what is the best way I can describe it. And again, when you're driving, especially when you're, you need to put a lot, like the biggest modification you can do is actually working on yourself to become a better driver. So the more time that you go out on the track or the more time that you go and spend driving and exploring how much you enjoy driving, the best way to feel that, the best way to feel their suspension and everything else is through the seat, right? It all comes down through your butt, through your hips. And when you have a good seat, a race bolstered seat or a good quality seat, um, you will get that feedback. You will get that improvement over time. So when people say, hey, the, the, best, the best modification you can do is get as much seat time as you can get on the track or with, a, with an instructor and so forth, right, to make yourself better, well, that seat time is dependent on the seat. So why not explore getting the seat um, is I think a very, very important one and often very overlooked. Again, makes a small, small percentage of the marketplace. Usually the, the people who buy this type of product are just out, the guys who are out there racing. People really neglect it in terms of on the actual street and you don't have to get a race specific seat. You can get one that is comfortable for yourself, you know, on every day. Uh, so that was four. Number five, um, this is, we were gonna do brakes, but it's actually gonna be, we're gonna do the brake lines. Now this is a very inexpensive modification. Doing stainless steel brake lines gives you the feedback that you get from your brakes. And you know, the, everyone thinks about going fast, but they really forget about the faster you go, the better you need to be able to stop. And that feedback, again, driving, enjoying it, and being ha able to have that feedback, well, feedback comes off these brake lines. Now there's better brakes you can improve upon, and I won't say those are neglected or underrated, right? But um, brake lines themselves give you that feedback, and brake lines are often forgotten when people are doing their brake jobs or putting their pads, the rotors, but brake lines seem to be something that they just completely forgot to switch out. Not expensive at all. Um, we're talking about brake lines will be well under 100 bucks. Oftentimes, um, there's great brands out there like StopTech, um, Goodrich, and some other ones out there. So uh, that was your five, and you guys know I like bonuses, so if you stuck around for it, uh, I'll give you guys the sixth bonus one. Um, guys, if you haven't done so, and if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but let me give you guys that bonus right now. Okay, um, so the bonus being, again, we talked about the seat giving you that feedback. Well, the steering wheel as well, Some not, not all race cars, but steering wheels from the, that generally come from the, from the factory are sometimes just too bulky. They're not gonna give you that feedback that you want. Having a nice steering wheel will give you that additional um, ride compliance and feedback that you're looking for. Okay guys, so that was the five and a bonus for you. And uh, if you liked it, um, make a comment. If you have some other ones, make a comment. I, I wanna see which ones you have. I'll probably do a video follow up eventually down the line on some other underrated uh, modifications in the industry. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next Talking Mods.